So you're thinking about moving to D.C. and you're considering the neighborhood of Georgetown, one of the most famous, if not the most famous neighborhood in town. Well, in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about Georgetown. We're going to cover where you would live, work, play, eat, and shop, and everything in between. And if you stick to the end, we'll go over a current market report as well as some data of the neighborhood for you. Now, if this is your first time to this channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, working, playing, eating, sleeping, D.C., please like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications so that you can be the first to know about the current market in D.C. My name is James Reed, and as an agent in town, I get calls and emails all the time from people just like you looking to make the move to D.C. So whether you're looking to make the move now or in the near future, feel free to shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email, or even schedule a Zoom below, and we'll get that conversation started for you. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to cover Georgetown on the map, and to do that, we need to go into my computer, and we're going to do that right now. All right, guys, if you made it this far, you know we are going over the neighborhood of Georgetown on the map today. So let's get to it. Now, Georgetown is a neighborhood in Northwest DC. It is one of the most famous, if not the most famous neighborhood. Uh, you've probably seen it in a number of movies uh, and pop culture. We're situated here in Northwest, right on the Potomac River. Now, here we go. So it's really a neighborhood that uh, is intersected with Wisconsin and M Street. You've got two sections you would predominantly live on, or live on, which is west or east of Wisconsin. Now this here's Wisconsin. Now if you are going to live on the west side of it, it'll feel a lot more busy than the east side, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then there's a mix of federal style. Well, predominantly federal style row houses as well as some uh, detached houses as well as some condos. You're going to find a lot of condos uh, and apartments up on the Q Street section, uh, bleeding over into the rest of town. And then there's uh, some luxury condos down by the waterfront. In these areas here, you're going to find pretty much all the row and townhouses as well as in this section over here. Now, your commute, say, say you actually have to go to work every day. What's your commute going to look like uh, in Georgetown? It's going to be quite short, but we'll still go over it and how you would get there. Now, it's about a mile-ish, depending upon what part of the neighborhood you're living in, if you're going downtown. Um, yeah, traffic is always, always a bear, but you could walk. Some, a lot of people actually walk, and it's nice if they walk, if they, uh, if they choose to. Uh, Ubers, cars, that'll be your predominant uh, mode. You might take a bus if you want. You will not be taking the train, though. There is no uh, metro train in Georgetown, um, and that is unlikely to ever change. Uh, there's a circulator that takes you uh, from Georgetown to other parts. Uh, as well as uh, Virginia, if you want that, if you want public transportation. But uh, your commute, you're, you're situated in, in a very desirable part of town. Your commute is going to be uh, basically whatever traffic is like. So it could be 10 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, depending upon construction and things like that. But it has died down a lot since uh, COVID. Uh, but it is certainly getting busy again with uh, about half of all uh, office workers going to the office every week now. Now, uh, other commutes that might concern you, which would be the airport. There's three airports in the region. Uh, you've got BWI here, you've got Dulles here, and you've got Reagan here, which I can should be circling these for you. So you get Reagan here. That's about 15 minutes. Uh, you've got Dulles there, 30, 45 minutes, and BWI. You're just going to chalk that up to an hour. But... Pretty easy to get to all of them. You would more than likely take a car. You cannot take uh, a metro train quite yet to um, quite yet to Dulles. It's not fully built out, but if you did, you would hook up and then actually you'd hook up over here of the orange line and then get on the silver and go all the way out if you wanted to do that. Now um, you can also there's a capital bike share that you can take around if you want as well. So 
in terms of uh, kids, if you have kids in the neighborhood and you're concerned about daycares or uh, public schools and private schools, we're going to go over that now. So if it doesn't apply to you, skip ahead. Uh, all right, so you've got a Montessori school uh, as well, Georgetown Montessori School. You've got uh, a Bright Horizons, which is more of a daycare uh, center than a personal Montessori school with their approach. We also have, uh, I keep losing it on the map. Uh, where'd you go, little folks? Uh, Q Street. They're, they're going to be much more like a, a Montessori versus a daycare. Um, and then it's not in the neighborhood, so it's cheating just a tiny bit. It's a little bit further up in Glover Park. There's a Kinder Care if you need if those three don't work out for you. Um, and like anything else, when it comes to child care in DC, you need to apply early and often be the first to get on the list uh, as soon as you possibly can. Uh, there are always wait lists, uh, so you just wanna get on the list as soon as you can. So public schools, your K through five elementary school is gonna be Hyde. Well, Hyde Addison, but everybody calls it Hyde. They are building another elementary school, may or may not affect some zoning, that's still to be determined. It'll open up in uh, 2025 and it'll be in the Palisades, right over in this area here. Uh, as of right now though, Hyde is your elementary school and it, it'll still be predominantly for most of Georgetown, but it is, uh, it is creeping up in population. Now, middle school, you have one middle school in the neighborhood that's public. Uh, where'd you go? Here's Hardy. Hardy Middle School is um, right there. It's at the edge of Georgetown. You've got Burleith and, George and Glover Park, uh, but Hardy serves all of uh, Georgetown. And if you have a student in Hardy now, they will zone to the new high school starting next year, which is uh, MacArthur. Uh, currently though, there's a little bit of a grandfathering process, uh, so we'll go over both. If you were to start today, you would go to actually Jackson Reed High School, which is up in Tenley, Tenley Town, so not far, 10-15 uh, minutes uh, drive up. Uh, they do have some buses, things like that, but uh, you would probably just be driving. Jackson Reed, which was, if you might not find it easily as well, because it was Wilson High School up until the last year, and it was renamed just recently. Uh, so, But MacArthur High School, MacArthur High School would be the high school moving forward for the neighborhood. Here we go. It's in the Palisades. This is right where the new elementary school will be built in a couple years. Um, so it's probably easier. Well, not, maybe not easier depending on traffic, but it is just as um, the commute is pretty much the same to get to MacArthur as it would be Jackson Reed. So there's no real differentiator there, but uh, just be aware that the new high school for Georgetown will be over in the Palisades. And there is one other public high school, but not uh, open enrollment. Well, not necessarily guaranteed enrollment is Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Duke Ellington is a DC public school, yes, but you have to audition to it. Uh, if you are a musician or a comedian, um, probably their most famous alumnus is Dave Chappelle, went to that school. Um, very popular, very um, hard to get into, but if you can, it is available to the public. Now, private schools, there's a bunch of them, so I'll go over a couple of the bigger ones. Um, right next to Duke Ellington, you've got Washington International School. It actually has two campuses. This is the K through five, uh, the primary school. Their six through 12 is further up yeah, of uh, Macomb Street. So what would that be? Cathedral Heights. Uh, this one is unique in the, in the sense that you will be taught two languages. You have English as a primary and you'll learn either French or Spanish while you're there. Uh, let's see. The other ones that are predominant in the neighborhood are where we go. Georgetown Visitation Prep. This is a all-girls school. Uh, college prep all girls school uh, is private, has a fantastic campus. Uh, they do open it up sometimes. You also have, and this is right on the edge of the neighborhood, you've got the British International School, uh, which is another K through 12 school. Um, 
that uh, will teach you a, a, what do they have a, a baccalaureate program is what they focus on there. So those are the schools, the, most of the schools, not every single tiny school, but um, it is, oh, and outside of obvious, the obvious one that we keep ignoring, uh, or I keep forgetting, is Georgetown, Georgetown University. Um, yeah, so Georgetown University, and then also close by is GW. Most people don't live in Georgetown and go to GW, but uh, you certainly could um, if, you, if you so chose. Let's see. Okay, so we covered where you live, where you could work, schools. Uh, now play, what are things to do in the neighborhood? Um, we'll start with outdoor things first uh, since people value that a lot. Uh, Dumbarton Oaks, you've got the gardens, you've got, switch over here. You've got the gardens, you've got trails. Um, it's very, uh, it is a popular spot. Um, now for kids, talked about kids earlier, you've got the neighborhood rec center, which is Volta Park. In Volta Park, you're gonna have tennis courts, basketball courts, you've got a neighborhood pool, uh, you've got a softball, uh, yeah, you've got a softball field, you've got a playground area, uh, you've got, sometimes you'll see kids playing football, pickup games, stuff like that. People walk their dogs off leash over here sometimes. Uh, it does get pretty busy in the afternoon uh, with 34th Street being right there. It's a, it's a big avenue to get out of town. So it's a one way. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, also, you've got Rose Park, which is on the east side. He's over here, Rose Park. Now, Rose Park has a tot lot. It'll have... It's hard to see right here. So it has a tot lot, which will have swings. Um, you've got a, a smaller rec center here. You've got some more tennis courts. You've got bigger softball field. Right, It comes right up against Rock Creek Parkway. Uh, but it's actually pretty quiet when you're there. Let's see. Also, and if you like the water, which you probably do, there are a lot of waterfront clubs that do kayaking, Paddle boarding, all sorts of uh, things. These, uh, where did you go, Thompson? Thompson's gonna be your most famous one. There we go. Thompson Boating Center, which is right off of the Georgetown waterfront. That one will have lessons throughout the year. You'll get to uh, launch from there. Uh, just very, very uh, busy throughout the year off of the water over here. And then, in terms of activities, outside of that, oh yeah, you've got a little splash pad here for the kids. It's very popular when it's warm. Um, yeah, let's see, yeah. Yeah, super, super popular when it's warm. In the winter, it's closed up. A lot of people will just be hanging out there uh, while they go to the waterfront park to uh, eat and shop and there's yeah and it's very close to the movie theater which there is parking at it as well if you uh, if you want to go see a movie while you're in the neighborhood now so we covered where you live work play where you're gonna eat now there's no no shortage of restaurants to dine at in Georgetown so we'll try and go over a few of them for you some of the more popular ones and maybe a couple that you uh, wouldn't necessarily find off the top so you've got um, Georgetown Waterfront Park. Oh yeah, I forgot about the ice rink too, which is it's a fountain the rest of the time of the year, but in the winter it's a popular ice rink. My uh, my sister-in-law at her wedding actually, uh, she got married over at Sequoia, and had some ice time private in there, so that was pretty cool. Uh, you've got Farmer Fisher's Bakers, which is an excellent restaurant. Uh, you've got uh, Feel Amar, Nick's Riverside Grill is super popular for being on the water. And you're going to find um, a lot of boats will be parked up here, especially on the weekends because people can dock here. They'll go in and they'll have little parties on the boat and then they'll get something from the restaurants or they'll have friends come out that way. You've also got, uh, in terms of restaurants, the majority are going to be off of Wisconsin and M. So some of my favorite ones that I've been to 
I like our Philomena. Philomena is very old school Italian. They, let's see, there's a picture here, All right? They actually make the pasta by hand and they have their pasta, pasta ladies, uh, usually a couple grandmas that are, that are there or nonas uh, making pasta. Piccolo is excellent as well. Uh, you have a cool little balcony there. You've got a violinist that'll be there on uh, weekends typically playing. El Canal is really good for uh, some Neapolitan pizza as well as, um, where to go here? Pizzeria Paradiso. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah, it's a little further away. That's also very, very good for Neapolitan pizza. You've got where's my favorite Thunder Burger? Here we go. Thunder Burger. Thunder Burger is gonna be tight, very tight on the inside, but excellent. Uh if you're trying to get a burger and a beer and go out. Uh what else? See, I don't want to go over too many chainy things. I mean, we've got pinstripes in the neighborhood, which if you've been there before, they have a few, a few restaurants throughout the country where they've got bocce and bowling and then a whole just wide assortment of things. That's a, that's a very safe, family-friendly if you've got little kids and you want to make sure they have something. But uh, you've got Clyde's, which is a neighborhood. Well, it's a neighborhood restaurant, but they're all over town as well. In terms of uh, Michelin Star, though, it's it's kind of lacking right now. Uh, there was a Michelin Star restaurant that had a fire, Reverie, burned down. Uh, they have Ziquette, which is just north in uh, Glover Park. And then on the west end of town, it's no longer Michelin Star rated for whatever reason. But um, it's still excellent, which is Blue Duck Tavern. So it's cheating a little bit because it's on the west end. It's not in Georgetown, but I would highly recommend going to Blue Duck if you can make it out there. Then, um, oh yeah, so outside of that, you got, if you're on the sweets, you got Georgetown Cupcake, which you may or may not have seen from TV. They had a TV show for a very long time, and then um, actually actually got ordered our cupcakes uh, for our out-of-town guests for our wedding from there. So that was, that was entertaining. And then um, there's Sprinkles as well. If you like, if you're not totally sold on Georgetown Cupcake, they're they're very good too. We bought uh, we bought from Georgetown Cupcake just because all of our family and friends that were coming from out of town knew of it and uh, thought it was cool. But uh, Sprinkles is just as good in my opinion. Um, but favorite place for dessert would be Thomas Sweet. Thomas Sweet is uh, ice cream fudge. Pretty busy typically. The line moves, and um, it also is open later than a lot of places. So you're going to see a line, especially at night and the weekends, that goes around and down the block. But inside of 10 minutes, you'll be in and out, and you'll have your ice cream. You'll be pretty happy. All right. So other shopping, uh, clothing stores. There's a bunch of clothing, bunch of furniture stores, bunch of boutiques that are going to be down here. Of course, you've got your Apple Apple store. Uh, you've got a couple quote-unquote malls, uh, Georgetown Mall, where, uh, where'd you go? Oh, here we go, Georgetown Park Shopping Mall. This one, it's got a few places in it. It even has a DMV, uh, which I remember renewing my car at. Um, I think, uh, what was it, True Lies had a, had a famous uh, shootout scene there. Uh, you've also got Caddy's Alley over here which will have Caligaris, which is a very high-end furniture store. Um, there was a CB2 right across from it over here, but they uh, they closed down. So if you want CB2, you have to go out to Tyson's. But there's a whole bunch of furniture stores, uh, boutiques, shopping, all throughout this, this whole area over here, uh, more than you can actually see on the map. Not everything pops up on this, but uh, there's you could easily spend um, your whole weekend walking through here and going through all these places to outfit your uh, your house or your uh, your condo very easily. Um, and then you just have to deal with the lead times of everything getting made. So let's see. Uh, yeah, but 
there's just a ton in here. So if there's something you're in particular looking for, you can comment below or message me and uh, I could certainly give you my opinion on it um, as well. So let's see here. So that covers, we covered um, pretty quickly where you would live, work, play, eat, and shop. So we'll scoot over to the, uh, the market report so you can see the current state of things in the neighborhood. So uh, in this neighborhood, in the last four weeks of this data, it has uh, eight new listings, so eight new properties, one on the market, 77 total altogether. You gotta break down, so it's pretty equal between condos and townhouses. Uh, detached, there's very few detached in the neighborhood to begin with, so I'm not surprised that number is small. Median price is around two million. That's not surprising. Um, if anything, it's gonna be skewed a bit higher for the townhouses. Those can range from two to eight um, pretty easily. The condos will, you're not gonna have a $2 million condo unless it's on the waterfront itself. So condos are gonna be more in the, uh, the, the lower end of that number. Um, let's see here. Now things that I, that I always uh, look at are months of inventory, giving the state of the market, as well as the average days on market. So 122 days, it's about four months, right? The average property market, but months of inventory. This tells us if everything was that's currently listed, how long it would take to sell it. That's five and a half months. So that tells me it's leaning towards a buyer's market right now, which you shouldn't be surprised about with uh, current interest rates. Typically, we define a healthy market where you've got about four months of four months of inventory on the market. That's pretty, uh, you know, healthy. Um, now, some people want to be sticklers and say, okay, buyers start at five, or some people say buyers market start at six. You know, five and a half, you can run it up. I say it's a buyer's market currently. That number will come down um, as we get closer to the spring, that spring market, um, as more buyers are shopping, more inventory will come off and more sellers will list. So that, that number will come down. Usually it doesn't go below three months um, with the exception of right after COVID when interest rates were super, super low. But I would suspect that number to come down as more buyers enter the market in the spring as they typically do for this neighborhood. So um, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, uh, put them in the comment section below. If there's anything you thought I missed, let me know about it. Uh, comment about what you like about the neighborhood the most or what you don't. If there's any other neighborhoods you wanna see or uh, things that you want me to go over. And as always, like, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in DC.